Hola, I'm Claudia Romo Edelman. And I'm Cynthia Kleinbaum Milner. And this is a podcast, A la Latina. The playbook to succeed being your authentic self. This is our wrap up episode. We're going to talk to you about the playbook of all the key takeaways that we got in season two. And you're going to hear many of these takeaways are similar to the ones in season one, which means our playbook is being reinforced. And we are learning that there's a very specific list of things that we Latinas should do and keep in mind so we can get to the top. So Cynthia and I spent a lot of time doing the Decalogue, the playbook of the 10 things that you as a Latina should look so that you can make it to the top in half the time with half the bruises. Let's start. Cynthia, tell me more about Money Lion. What is your favorite product? The product that I loved the most first was our Credit Builder Loan. When I moved to the U.S., I realized that a good credit score impacts so many aspects of our life. If you have a high credit score, you can get lower interest rates on loans and credit cards, better insurance rates, and better chances of getting a loan. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that more than half of our members raise their credit score by up to 27 points in 60 days? Wow, okay, so I'm learning something new here, and I should be checking on my credit score myself. Everybody should, and it's super easy. So for anyone out there needing to improve their credit score or even know your credit score, come to Money Line. That's amazing. How do you access the Credit Builder Loan? Two ways. Either go to moneylion.com slash membership or download the Money Lion app. Okay, great. Thank you. Let's I'm in. It. Let's start with number one. Embrace your cultural identity. And when I think about this, Claudia, the first guest that comes to mind is actually somebody that didn't do this. Marilu Marshall. She couldn't embrace her cultural identity. And she even changed her name and last name to be able to get into law school because when she was going to school, she didn't think she could get the financial aid and the admission that she wanted because she was Latina. So she literally put her Latinidad in hiding and became somebody else. Went to school, became a lawyer, and then embraced her Latinidad. And she has made it a point of her career to make space for all of us to be who we want to be. And that's the number one key takeaway of this season and the previous season, which is be your authentic self. If you are your authentic self, you're going to transmit more self-confidence. You're going to be able to be more proactive, be more ingrained yeah. in the cultural community where you are. And I think that that's the number one thing that is all across every one of our guests is be yourself. Everyone else is taken yeah. and people will recognize when you're faking it. So... Be your authentic self in order to get promotions faster. Also, you have no choice, ladies, because if you're not your authentic self, your energy, your mental bandwidth is going to be dedicated to fitting in, to faking it. And you won't have enough energy to actually do your work and be amazing at your work. So stop trying to be someone else. Like Claudia said, everybody else is taken. Be yourself. Number two, take risks. I think it was Glory Alcantara who said mm -hmm. that she became more comfortable taking risks because she took one small risk, nothing happened. Sometimes it worked out, sometimes it didn't work out, but it's not like her career like, ended. So she just started being more comfortable with taking risks. If you don't take risks, if you don't get out of your comfort zone, there is no growth. And we're so scared sometimes to shake the boat and to move into different positions. But even in our A La Latina dinner in New York, I love hearing Ariana Stollard saying that it's going to be okay. At the end of the day, you're going to be okay. Your career is going to be okay. Your family is going to be okay. So take comfort in knowing that things will be okay and take risk in lateral moves, take risk in changing careers, take risk in moving to a different industry if you feel more comfortable. So number two, take risks. Number three, say yes to opportunities. We had many guests that spoke about how sometimes they didn't seek the opportunities, but people put opportunities in front of them. And even when they weren't sure that it was the right opportunity or that they were ready for it, they said yes. Rita Ferro from Disney had so many sponsors and so many people in the teams adjacent to her that they would come to her and say, hey, there's this new opportunity. Do you want to take it? And she just said yes. 
And that's how she got to the top, by saying yes when an opportunity knocked on her door. But we also heard a lot from a lot of guests saying, I'm going to say yes to volunteering. I'm going to say yes to go where the fire is. I'm going to say yes to doing the extra, extra mile so that I can be seen and can be noticed and can be recognized. So so yes, opportunities, but also say yes to volunteering and say yes to trying your hardest. Number four, build your reputation. Claudia and I talk about this a lot because we know that Latinas work very hard, but we also know that we are too humble and that we maybe don't feel comfortable speaking about our accomplishments. And this is something that's going to slow us down. It's going to slow you down. If you only focus on delivering results and you assume that people are noticing your results without you taking ownership of them, you are missing out. So spend time speaking about what you and your team are delivering. It's part of like playing the corporate game in America. And I think that what I heard a lot from all our guests in season two and season one is how someone else noticed you, your hard work, and took you on an opportunity. I said, you can do it better. What I didn't hear enough is self-advocacy and self-promotion are integral to self-realization and going in the corporate ladder. So let's build our reputation, having our work talk about ourselves and our excellence, but also let's be better at self-advocacy and self-promotion the way that other people do. Number five, seek mentors and sponsors. In this season, we spoke, I think more than in the last one, about allies, about how, of course, mentors and sponsors are super important, but sometimes we think that a mentor or a sponsor has to be somebody that looks like us. And if that's what we're going to wait for, it's going to take us like five generations to get to the top because there's not enough of us at the top. So we should consider anyone that believes in us a sponsor. If you have somebody in your company that you work with, they can become your sponsor even if they don't look like you. And mentors, you can start tapping into mentors even when you're going to school. We heard from Nancy Reyes, we heard from Anna Sepin about people that mentor them to get, not even to college, into high school. People that were not Latinas, people that weren't part of their families, but they kind of took it upon themselves to guide them to navigate an environment that was totally unknown to them and really help them open doors that enable them to be where they are. And also we heard in season two how people are giving back, how they got mentors and sponsors and they are committing themselves to becoming a mentor and a sponsor for many other people so that people want to work with you and see you as a role model and ideally as a hero. And number six, don't look at your career as a ladder. I can't tell you how much I wish people understood this. I still see a lot of young people, Latinas and not, thinking that you need to get a promotion every two years and in your LinkedIn or in your resume, it should look like you were just climbing a ladder. And every one of our guests told us that is not true. You can move to different parts of the organization to learn the business, to also experiment with other functions and see if you like something better than what you're doing now. And ultimately, that's going to make you a better asset for your organization if you understand the business. And if you start looking at how all this playbook connects with each other. You can start understanding that it's going to be okay, that you can start taking risks, that you need to build a network, that you need to understand how the careers are not straight. Then you you start building a pattern for yourself that allows you to grow and do it by being your authentic self. Number, Number seven. seven. You go. <laughs> Invest in continuous learning. I love Adela Cepeda saying that 20% of her time is devoted to understanding the industry where she is operating. How much we have to be curious, how much we have to trigger that continuous learning in the places where we are so that we can get into those corporate board positions that we're all wanting. To be able to do that, you need to invest in continuous learning. And Adela said up to 20%. We heard it from many other guests as well. Yeah, many of our guests have master's degrees, PhDs. There is a formal learning that you can sometimes take time away from your job and immerse yourself in learning something. But what Adela said was like so much more important and so much more impactful to all of our lives, which is up until the day we die, we should spend 20% of our time learning something new because life changes too fast, technology changes too fast, and we can get stale. So 
Number eight is one of my favorites, building relationships. 40% of the success of an entrepreneur depends on the networks that they have in order to get to the places where they need to be. We Latinos, we do not have enough networking opportunities, enough organized infrastructure to build relationships. So you need to go and make a bigger effort to show up to places where the network is, to be able to be conscious about networking for purpose so that you can see how our guests are we're looking at a power map and who do they need to build relationships with so that they can advance on their career and build trust. And you don't have to think about relationships in a transactional way, in a what can this person do for me immediately. Sometimes you nurture a relationship that will yield something later on. And sometimes it's going to happen like Patricia Pacheco, who was waiting tables, mentioned to one of her customers that she was looking for a job. And that person got her an interview at American Express. And that was for her first job. So build relationships anywhere you are. Number nine, adapt your style to the circumstances. The first time that we heard this very clearly called out was from Adela Cepeda, who said that she adapts not only her style, but she calls it the language of the environment where she's in. So if she's operating a company, she speaks at one language. If she's on a board, she speaks the language of the board. And that's how we should all think about adapting without losing who we are, but also not saying, this is who I am, take me as I am, and you adapt to me. No, we have to change, like uh, Ileana Musa said on season one, change the clothes that we pack in the suitcase, depending on where we're going. But always pack your own clothing, because what we have seen is that in order to be able to be accepted, Latinas have been packing the clothes of someone else in order to dial down, in order to be um, accepted. So adapt your style to the circumstances, knowing that you need to learn the language where you are, but you cannot change and deny who you are. And I think that the number 10, which is really important, and we have heard from everybody, and I think it is my personal message for everyone listening to a Latines, aim high, dream big understand that we are in the greatest position that we can as a Latino community, that our ancestors have made it possible for us and made all the sacrifices so that we can have a school, so that we can be the first generation that goes to college, that is in senior positions that can make it. So dream big, make your ancestors really proud of your success and don't deny yourself the opportunity to aim as high as you want. And once you've reached that high, that you were dreaming for, move the goalpost because there's somewhere else that you can go. Never stop dreaming. And take someone with you. Yes. And I was actually going to say that the person from all of our guests that reminds me more of this goal is the guest from the episode right before this one. <laughs> Claudia Romo Edelman, she dreams high and she's teaching me to dream high too. It was amazing having this second season. I hope that all of our audience can feel how much this is incredibly gratifying, satisfying, but also useful for you uh, as much as it is for us to do a La Latina podcast and a La Latina dinners, expanding it, the network so that we can be having more Latinas in the top positions in Half the Time with Half the Bruises. Rate, review, and help other Latinas by telling them about A La Latina podcast. And all of that we can do leading and succeeding A La Latina! Latina.